an exciting one. Uh, we still have yet to have a mirror match, and curious uh, just kind of what will happen if we do in fact see a Monarch mirror match. Curious what each player is playing. We'll see. Um, yeah, curious about, someone had mentioned Mike Steinman. I did see him in the background. It's, it's curious. I don't know if he had just won that quickly. I mean, the round has been playing for about five minutes on the other side, but uh, just kind of curious. What's going on with that? And for those of you, just an update. This is round six of Future Match. They intentionally have drawn this round. But they will play game one as a courtesy to all of you. So this is uh, two undefeateds going at it. It is a Pendulum deck versus Monarchs. And they have agreed to play even though they are intentionally drawing for you. So again, uh, really... Nothing to lose, but everything to gain in terms of uh, the viewing standpoint. So interested to see uh, what these two players have in store with really nothing to lose. See if they really kind of go in. And so Joseph gets us started with Monkey Board and Skull Crobat Joker. He's got a hand of Lizard Draw. And it looks like, uh, again, we'll go ahead and just put in the draw. And we've got Vector Pendulum overlaying himself with Skull Crobat Joker to possibly make an Abyss Dweller. No, he does go for the Magi uh, Magi Spectre there. Give him something in the end phase. Yeah, that is something that's different from uh, other events and that ARG do allow uh, the ability to draw. Uh, just again, ensuring that players that have done their job securing a 5-0 and victory um, thus far uh, make the cut. It's, again, we talked about it earlier in the day that it's not impossible to fall off after that 5-0 win and just lose out and miss the cut. And so these two players just helping one another out to secure... Uh, yet another top for Patrick Hoban, and another one uh, for Joseph Lynch. So he's going to make a terraforming. And there's the Sky Iris. Sky Iris comes down, and it's going to pop off and grab uh, either the uh, Unicorn and Ariane. We'll probably grab a strike, and there we go. So again, we see a, a pretty great opening from Joseph. A game and a game that, that may not have a whole lot of context, but uh, again, just appreciate that they're playing it out for, for those of you at home. And again, uh, I believe that we are looking at seven rounds today based on uh, the information we received earlier today, and it seems to be playing out that way. Those of you just joining us, we're in ARG St. Louis, uh, actually in Collinsville, Illinois. We're showing Mithra being played in Patrick's deck. Nothing too crazy yet. Um, but even though the game has no meaning, it is uh, something to consider that these players are essentially showing what they're playing uh, to one another, even though they may find each other later in the tournament. So it is kind of an interesting dilemma. I mean, I guess from one standpoint, you're playing one game, so it's helping not only us continue to stream great content, but also um, not giving away too much in terms of surprises. So Patrick resolving a pantheism right now. He'll probably grab some returns. And he does indeed seek out his three return of the monarch, adds one to his hand, shuffles up. And again, we are live, ARG. Round six feature match, Patrick Hoban versus Joseph Lynch, Draco Pals, XYZ Monarch. Intentional draw has already been accepted, but this is being played uh, really for the lulls and really for the experience. Um, I, I think if I was Patrick, I, I would play it just to understand what, what I'm up against. And it 
looks like Brilliant Fusion comes down next, and Brilliant Fusion is going to give us a little more insight into Patrick's build, um, sending Lazuli versus Garnet versus anything else. And that's exactly what local champ has asked as well in the chat is, you know, is he using the Zulkin or, or is he just, you know, playing his uh, his version? Has he made any changes? I see a Garnet. So, no, he, he is playing his version where um, just believes that less bricks is better. So he's playing a Garnet. It's kind of interesting. So, again... If I had to guess, I would say that Patrick is uh, just kind of playing the odds in terms of the Brilliant Fusion, kind of realizing he doesn't have to do as many crazy plays if he just plays the uh, the Garnet. Still able to win. So Strike is out there and was used. So I'm going to go ahead and take down the life points there from Mr. Lynch. Interested to see what happens next. So it's 65 to 8,000. 6,500, 8,000. Patrick Hoban in the lead. Uh, both players really opening quite well. So maybe for the first time on stream, we've seen both players uh, not bricking. And again, just a testament to what they've been able to do. So it's been exciting. And there's Volcasaurus. So that's already going to get a lot of damage in. I believe that's 1850 that he'll take. So I'm going to go ahead and up him to 75 and then subtract the 1850. For the 650 is the calculation. And there's a quick draw. So there's your answer, folks. Ultimaya is being played by Patrick Hoban. And this should be game, folks. Uh, 27 and 28. No, actually, I think it may be 150 short. So he may be 150 life points short if all of this connects. I'm curious if either Patrick or myself did the math wrong, but no, I, I think he's going to be short, which gives life to Joseph not over yet folks stay tuned we've seen several comebacks today James Frazier Brady Brink Good, good point. I did forget the uh, timer clock, guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. And again, probably because the match doesn't matter. So I've got the life at 8,000 to 150. Uh, 250, excuse me. So 250 to 8,000 in favor of Patrick Hoban. And this game may be far from, you know, far from over, but at the same point they've already drawn. So... Take it what you will. We at least got to see Patrick Hoban explode and got some interesting insight into what he could be playing. It looks like he's playing Brilliant Fusion, just not uh, kind of the awful cards of two Lazuli and Dark Witch supplementing bricks. And he's playing the Mega Zaborg in the main deck. So, hey, guess who found an answer to the XYZ Monarch Mirror Match? Patrick Hoban, Mega Zaborg. Pick it up. He's using that as his ability 
to level the playing field against his XYZ opponents. And it makes sense, right? You want to use a card that's an engine card. And uh, Monarch is part of that engine, being able to reveal for tenacity, being able to search it for return. So it's searchable outs to the mirror match. He's main decking it. I think that's probably a, as good a preview as you're going to get until we see him assert his way into the finals potentially uh, tomorrow. So really uh, kind of an interesting uh, feature match in the sense that uh, we didn't know it was going to be intentionally drawn ahead of time, but being that as it, as it may, we're at least able to get a flash of his decks. So we see Twin Twisters, we see One for Ones, we see One one Lone Mithra, uh, two Eidos, two Idea, no, two Mithra. So just continue to add those up as we move along. He's got an Escalation in there. Um, so both players just kind of showing off what they have in their deck. So there's a Borg really coming in clutch for Patrick, so... Interesting, very interesting. We see also a um, harp in there as well. Don't know if that's intentional. Again, that was round six feature match. And uh, again, only seven rounds today, I believe. And it looks like we are nearing the end of our day one here in St. Louis. ARG coming at you live. It's TPO Pro. But we will, uh, looks like both players are shuffling their decks. They may play another one for you all. Mega Zaborg in the main deck. Uh, again, let the hype train begin. So now we have game two in this winner draw all match. Uh, Looks like they're kicking it off with uh, a little Pendulum Sorcerer action with Vector Pendulum, adding Skull, Crobat, Joker, along with a Monkey Board. No, Gee Turtle is chosen instead because of the Lizard Draw in the scale, which will then uh, allow him to destroy his Master Pendulum with its own effect, and he'll also add another Lizard Draw. So Joseph, again, showing kind of one of the reasons that he's been successful this far. A, a gigantic pendulum summon, followed by uh, a whole lot of draws, getting him an absolute uh, brilliant hand, really. He's got the magic deflector, and he's got a whole lot of advantage coming with it as well. So he is just continuing to Dougie. And again, if you're joining us, this is round six feature match. Patrick Hoban, Joseph Lynch. Joseph's going to use the end phase effect and add a monkey board. Again, encourage you to come on out to ARG St. Louis. It's in Collinsville, Illinois. We're here for day one of our two-day event. Tomorrow, of course, we have the 1K in one day for any Yu-Gi-Oh fans, as well as unlimited side events for those that paid for entry. We also have the conclusion of this tournament, the main event. So many storylines. We have Jake Finney playing a very interesting version of Absolute King Backjack Burning Abyss, complete with Red Lotus, the trap card that pays 2,000 life points to banish a card from your opponent's hand until their next opponent's end phase. So really some hot and spicy techs. We also have the consistency of Michael Steinman, Brady Brink, Patrick Hoban, Desmond Johnson playing these inconsistent decks, and we saw how some of them can be extremely powerful and how some can be uh, extremely underwhelming and result in very, very quick losses. Uh, and then we have Joseph Lynch, who's played a very strong tournament so far. He's got a pendulum deck, and it's kind of a dark horse. And even though it continues to pick up steam, people will continue to forget about it. I think that bodes well for not only this setting, but maybe nationals down the road as players begin to focus more and more on the Monarch matchup, guaranteeing they don't lose to them, and, and then by doing so, uh, leaving themselves open to a deck that still has a lot of power in it in the pendulum mechanic. So again, it's 8,000, 8,000. We've got a tenacity for uh, return. Pantheism's been used as well. And Patrick just kind of looking through the deck. And for those of you joining us again, it's TPO Pro. Uh, appreciate the support and the feedback, keeping the commentary live. And again, be here all weekend, hopefully. 
Uh, now we could also start a hashtag, which is hashtag give Tyler $35 back. I did actually enter the tournament, had every intention to play, and just decided to uh, come on over to the booth, support uh, ARG. And so here's a twin twister from Patrick Hoban, and Idea hits the graveyard, hitting two to the back row, and there's a chain magic deflector, which of course will negate it, protecting uh, Joseph's other set card. Idea will also activate here. Adding back Pantheism, which will also allow him to use that Pantheism, since Pantheism uh, is not once per turn, and it's also a normal spell card, so it can be used under Magic Deflector. And he does, as predicted, use that Pantheism to draw deeper into the deck drawing a prime and what looks like I'm not sure what his uh, monster card he drew I believe it's a red layer so he's got a red layer uh, I was thinking about maybe applying some pressure but uh, yeah he'll go ahead and grab the red layer Again, this is round six, feature match. Round six between Patrick Hoban and Joseph Lynch. Both players started off 5-0, and oh, played one another, decided to draw with uh, the top cut happening, and just one more round. So don't want to take any chances that you could fall from grace from 5-0 and oh to on the outside looking in. So it's a, a good move, and it's uh, one thing that really does set ARG apart from, from other events in, in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. And then Strike, of course, was activated. So we'll go ahead and reduce the life points of Mr. Lynch in this one down to 6,500. And again, they continue to kind of feel each other out in this one. He's looking at Idea, reading the card. I just maybe checking some card text. He's going to twin twister. Uh, obviously, dishing the prime here. Um, but I, I thought that uh, Magic Deflector was still in effect. Against Tipo Pro here courtside, uh, looking at Patrick and Joseph Lynch. So Patrick Hoban and Joseph Lynch. If I'm not mistaken, though, I don't know if they can activate this with the. I thought Deflector was still this turn. Um, I don't know if he's just trying to do that to ditch Prime, but it's going to take a little bit of some water. Again, it's Tipo Pro, Tyler Poe. Feel free to reach out to me on Duel's Grounds. I'm not a great player, but do enjoy the, the game nonetheless. And especially love these feature matches. Patrick Hove and Joseph Lynch. Uh, something different for everyone in this one. We've got Tolkien, uh, some sort of Tolkien Monarch build, uh, including a Mega Zaborg for, I assume, the Mirror Match, as well as a uh, deck like Dreco Pals that relies heavily on their Ignister and uh, Dynoster plays. <clears throat> and then we have Joseph Lynch, who's playing a more conventional build of Pendulums. Both players are 5-0. and oh. uh, This is round six. And they've both decided to intentionally draw, so they will move out of this 501 and position themselves for uh, a chance at that top cut, uh, win or lose next round. And I would assume that they would uh, be in regardless of that outcome. <clears throat> and so Patrick is just again taking some time. Um, speaking of time, uh, we're not really keeping track of time in this one just because there is really no no necessarily a point. Understand that uh, from a viewer standpoint, it's, it's a little concerning. But I've updated the time now to show you kind of where we're at in the, in the round. But again, this is just kind of for fun and f for you guys to be able to kind of watch Patrick and Joseph go at it at what could be a potential rematch down the road.
What's going to be really interesting, as we look at these uh, players in the top cut. Oh, wow, and there's the game. So kind of a swift 2-0. And speaking of Patrick Kova, I mean, there's there's no one that's dominated the game the way that he has. And um, for those of you, you know, regardless of, of what you think about him, I think he's really um, influenced the game in a way that um, may never have been done before in, in, in a lot of different ways, whether it's his concepts about the extra deck. I don't think any of this is really new information, but it's just something that's been put into practice time and time again about you know, utilizing your extra deck um, as essentially a side deck, thinking about... Um, you know, card advantage in, in different ways and kind of building for consistency and logic and he's really kind of a, a phenomenal player in, in a lot of respects but I think he still uh, has a chip on his shoulder and he's been able to maintain that chip on his shoulder uh, due to his performance at Worlds and I think that he is a player that can absolutely make it back there and he's more than capable of making it but I, I'd really be interested to see if he would go to Worlds